already nine and a half billion in 2014. So they've already beat the estimates. But where are they going, you might ask? Well, I just haven't had the answer to that question. So what's crowdfunding doing right now is they've, they've actually added almost 300,000 jobs. And they're injecting $65 billion by the end of this year. And they're on track. And that's not even half, that's not even 5% of what they could do because pure equity crowdfunding is only available in certain states in the United States right now. It hasn't been fully adopted, correct? Okay. Have you ever seen an in industry that's growing by 92%? And by the way, the angel, the, the cloud funding, which is something that I've earmarked worldwide, is just as dynamic, and I'll talk to you about that too. So these are two new funding streams that are going to eclipse the dinosaurs. They're dying. And depending on where you are, they're better for you as a startup. How many people have had heard of crowdfunding before you came here? How many of you think crowdfunding is a bad idea? The last conference I gave in Victoria, half the audience raised their hands. Believe it or not, mm -hmm. World Leader Summit, 600. Many angel investors think it's a bad idea. Think it's a bad idea. Please say more about that. Okay, a couple of reasons. Um, number one, um, it means a lot of shareholders. And that's a management problem. It's a management problem for two reasons. What happens if the list gets lost? What if you don't know who owns the company? And it's happened. So who owns, who owns my company? Who has the share certificate? What's in the securities register? Who's the authority? Suppose you sell your shares or lose them or give them away and the records are poor. So record keeping and administration is a challenge. <clears throat> it's easy to keep track of a dozen angel investors and one or two venture capitalists. But if you have 2,000 investors, you need different systems and different mechanisms. So that's one problem. When you go to sell your company, the buyer usually has to make sure that they get all of the shares. Now they have to get shares back from 2,000 shareholders. That can be a problem. With public companies, it's easy because it's all electronic. But crowdfunding isn't quite there yet. So, Good point. So that's one of the issues. The other problem for you guys, and you have to know this as entrepreneurs, is you're going to get calls every day from your investors saying, how's my investment coming? How are my shares doing? Have I doubled my money yet? They're going to call you every day. And it's the little ones, the ones that put in $100 that are going to call you more than the ones that put in $10,000. And they're going to drive you nuts. Yeah. And you have to figure out how to deal with that. And so there's that information, giving them information. You're going to be now managing your company and you're going to be managing your shareholders. You know, public companies, which is the ultimate crowdfunding, which, I mean, public companies are crowdfunded, right? Because anyone can invest in them. And they are always in two businesses. They're in the business of making and selling their products or services, and they're in the business of selling and looking after their shareholders. So now you're in two businesses, not just one. So those are two of the big negatives, the administration, the costs, and that problem with um, being diverted or unfocused now and looking after two businesses rather than one. Mike, thank, thank you for uh, that dead on. And uh, there, some of the people are coming to grips with that problem after it's occurred. So where is it going by 2020? I'm not going to go into depth and do difference to Craig. I do speak too much. Huge impact. We talked about equity crowdfunding. That's not, you know what I was saying, all those numbers of crowdfunding? Well, equity is working and making, doing its thing in three or four countries, but not the states, really, except for a few states. So it's still not engaged yet. And holy cow, what happens when it is engaged? For, now, for you, the, for the entrepreneurs, um, the product type of crowdfunding, non-equity, is wonderful because you don't have those problems with shareholders. Like the rewards right. base there. Right, that rewards you by the product. Yeah. And so you, you're first in line for new products. <clears throat> and, and you help the entrepreneur by being 
a participant in that. But still, many of us would like to own a piece of the action, right? If you buy you know, the next greatest smartphone, that's wonderful, but you've only got one of them. But if you think that the company is a winner and you'd rather put in $100 and see it become $1,000, the only way to do that is by owning a piece of the action. That's why equity can work well for the entrepreneurs and the investors. True. Now this is information slightly behind. There's now 1,300 crowdfunding sites worldwide. 40 in Latin America. More than 40. Now that's a good list to have. Who could I speak to here? Somebody in LATAM should actually get that list together because a lot of the companies I witnessed today could take advantage of that. Uh, now, wh one of the things I want to mention about crowdfunders is they're becoming very segment-based. So there's even a difference between in Indiago and Kickstarter. Some of them work more for some companies than other companies. In fact, it's got so complicated that we have a little module that we do now where we help a client decide on what crowdfunding platform is the best for them. Because they don't know. And then everybody thinks, oh, it's very complicated. It's not. To do a crowdfunding campaign is the job for your marketing and your CEO. Because what you want to do is just show off your plans, do a video. There's lots of people who are in the video world here. Do a nice, exciting video. Get it up there and then package it so that you can say you can buy a year's worth of bus tickets or this or, or that and you can get people up to date. Now, the secret about crowdfunding, Mike, is that you have to pre-sell 30% of your objective. Sorry, that's, you got to go out there and pre-sell it. Because if you have a crowdfunding campaign that's sitting there on the crowdfunding site and doing nothing, people aren't going to buy. So what they found is the research is you've got to get your friends, family, get out there and still knock the roots, get your story out, do a meet, meet media thing, get them there, make sure you pre-sell 30% because at that point, the rest of the crowd, whew. Lori Stewart, who you know, in Calgary, just went after a $100,000 crowdfunding. She got 991000 And I'll describe some others. So the problem with plenty, a world of plenty, is where do you go first? How do you get started? Let's ask that question to our colleague here. He's, you, he's one second how did you sell? How, how, did you, how did you do it? And you might want to look at that slide because you'll notice something. So How question, did you kickstart it? Uh, yeah, uh, well, we kickstarted it. Was, um, it was a <coughs> card playing game in order to learn to code. So it was code cards. Um, basically, uh, we did a great video. Um, actually, my, my brother did. He, he's an excellent marketeer. Um, and, and he came from Techstars. This was in London. And we were raising 10,000 10, pounds. Um, and right after we launched the video, well, previously, we, we, we talked to everybody to see if it was a good idea, if they liked it. Um, we did some, some prototypes, some early prototypes. We showed them around, and they said, yeah, you should do it on Kickstarter, which is what we did. Um, and we, like, 10 days before, we sent, like, beta videos to everybody and see if everything was okay and set up for the campaign. Um, and once, you know, we... we we did lists of people that we were going to send that to. Smart. Um, and like we prepared for the launch. And, and when we finally launched, well, we just sent like thousands of videos. Um, and, and we tweeted like crazy. We tweeted. Good. I mean, Good. We yeah. tweeted to, to everybody, really. And I, I tweeted to, to Treehouse. Treehouse is a, a, a learning um, yeah. platform. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and Treehouse actually was one of the, like the big, they, they donated $2,000. Two thousand pounds, two thousand pounds. Yeah, it was one of the big and, and wow. it's a big company. So Treehouse actually just we tweeted what Treehouse was one out of at least thirty big companies we tweeted to, yeah. um, but it was the one that you know gave us two thousand pounds and, and a lot of uh, traction. And the other one was Draper. Draper University. Yeah. 
but my brother knew him, so yeah. that's kind of a cheat. But so, that's, so no, it's not a cheat. That's very real. Very, and, very and, real. And so your objective was how much? 10,000 pounds. And how quickly did you hit that or exceed it? It, it, was, it was kind of linear, really. We, we didn't really get a J-curve. Um, we finished, uh, the, we, we got the funding. Um, we did about 1,000 pounds more. We did about 11,000 uh, pounds. Uh, and it was pretty linear. I mean, we had like these jumps, but uh, more or less we had, we had a, a big jump at the beginning and then it was just linear mm -hmm. up to 10,000. Uh, we reached the objective about three days before the campaign closed. Great. Because um, I know a couple of days before, th there are people that don't pledge, but are like watching. Yeah. And they're interested in pledging only if they see that the pledge is going to, yeah. to, to be completed. So um, Kickstarter sends an email like five days before the pledge is done to people that are interested. So then we got that final boost oh, at good. the end. Good. Um, that was that it. Was fun. That yeah. Was fun. Yeah, that was fun. And you got push notifications. Everyone, you know, every time you got ten dollars, you got a, a message. You know, someone put ten pounds, fifteen pounds, twenty pounds. And so. people from all around the world. So we used yeah. To be ah, so take note. Fun. You want to repeat that? People from all around the world. All around yeah. the world. So I heard people say, "Oh, I'm I'm in Chile. How the hell am I going to get money?" No. Yeah. Actually, we we ended up not winning as much money because we miscalculated um, shipping costs for around the world. Yeah. yeah. So we, yeah. we didn't win much, but uh, we got a lot of stock and... Uh, so on the checklist I talk about is yeah. make sure you think about shipping costs. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we miscalculated that. But well, we did... This we did is good. great. Good. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying great. this so much. I have two really great presenters here. So what are the problems? Mike's going to help me on this. Mike actually beat me to the punch on the fact is fraud is not the problem. It's much less. But failure is a problem. And the reason is by the very nature that crowdfunding allows quick access, you get people getting the money who haven't quite got their ideas solidified and there's all sorts of what I call cliffs that they're going to fall over. So. In the UK, I'm working quite heavily with them. They're changing legislation the US is going to follow. We've got to find a way to get rid of the garbage in. The platforms are going to be held accountable eventually. I mean, if, 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 a, if a, a platform, an angel platform, kept pushing gar garbage at the angels, what do you think is going to happen? So you deal with that through due diligence. Yeah, and you know, I mentioned the <coughs> example of the fellow who was caught by the public, by the crowd. But it's, it's not just for fraud, right? It's for due diligence um, in, in a more holistic way because now the whole crowd is going to ask questions, g ask Blog, questions post. And, and give opinions why this product is great or why it's not going to be great. And hopefully that will keep people from investing in what could be failures because we're going to see with crowdfunding, we're going to see an even higher failure rate if we're not careful. Exactly. You know, it's not going to be 90%. It's going to be 95% of the new ventures, the new startups, are going to fail. And that's a problem, too, because then we, the crowd, will say, this isn't working. Why yeah. should we yeah. continue to speculate on these companies where the risks are so, so high? So, <coughs> again, the crowd <coughs> can help in doing that due diligence, and the crowd can probe and ask the tough questions. <laughs> I don't want to do that in the mic. <laughs> okay, well, uh, both those points are, are, are really important. In, in the UK and Australia, they're going to add a checklist to the crowdfunding platforms, what they call uh, the, cr the crowd vet list. And that list is going to look awfully familiar to something I've been working on because I'm licensing a lot of them on that. So Mike said the last point. So I, I don't need to talk any, any more about it. Now, let's talk about crowdfunding because Mike would probably be very interested in this, in that <coughs> it's not the case in Canada yet. I think you pointed that out, Mike. Uh, people can't solicit uh, accredited investors in Canada yet. But with the Jobs Act changed and the fact you don't have rules against it here, don't have rules against it here, you can solicit angels and accredited investors. What's the difference between an angel and a credit investor?
God knows. But one of the things about accredited investors, you look at people who are passionate, like the doctor who helped build a patient control system. Other doctors, they have the money. They're legally accredited all over the world. All over the world. So you can, you now have an avenue for raising money that you didn't have before. You can solicit in, into the States and most parts of the world, including the UK. I'm working with the Canadian government. <coughs> they have actually a regulation that makes it difficult to go after a credit investor under the accredited exemption unless you know that investor. It's called NI33-103. I hated it. Why are you restricting me from going and talking to an angel investor when I can go and talk to an angel investment group? And that's okay, but I can't talk to an angel investor. So I can't go direct. So, so Don, explain to us, what do you really mean by cloud funding as opposed to crowdfunding? Because until today, I've not okay. heard of cloud funding. Is it kind of like crowd from heaven? Crowd funding is it's open to everyone with no restriction using the JOBS Act. Cloud funding is well-to-do individuals who, um, who are accredited, means that they have more than a certain amount of income and assets or income or assets. I often refer to them as angels and accredited investors. Why use cloud versus crowd? Because this is the term, I mentioned it to some people and you knew it. It's going to be a term you hear a lot about. And what it is, angels and accredited investors are starting to invest worldwide. I one guy I met in Edmonton, we don't have, um, uh, you know, cloud funding there. So he went somewhere else in the States and invested from Canada. So I was telling one of the ministers saying, why are we doing this? We've got to get our act together. Now, why I call it cloud is that you can segment by profiles and search algorithms the angels that you go after. Where would you do this? Well, if you go to AngelList, you can do it well. If you go to Gust, you can do it. Ah, if you go to LinkedIn, you can do it very elegantly. Why? LinkedIn's got this search. That's quite awesome. You can search by whether they have yellow hair or, or, or no, no I'm, ju I'm just kidding you. But you can search by their interests and the fact they're an angel investor. And all of a sudden, boop, you've got a list of people that you can knock on the door and say, would you like to invest in my company? Now, cloud funding is also happening through organizations which are developing their own cloud. It's more physical. It's a stronger re relationship. There is an in intermediate for it. Uh, the intermediary typically doesn't charge money, but they will look at your opportunity and they may rule it in or out. So there's some reliance. Now that's starting to move more and more towards disintermediation as well, where, where the uh, venture captains, such as yourselves, can make their own calls. But I'd say both angel crowdfunding and crowdfunding are going to be primary opportunities for you to get money now. So I would send my pennies up to the cloud and someday it'll rain dollars. Hopefully. Good. And in fact, there's a chicken egg situation. I was speaking with angels. You know, nine out of ten of them fail. Ah, but can we do something? build some tools and control systems to change that stat around. Because organizations, and I look at Mike, are getting better results than that. Mm -hmm. How? What are they doing? And I think if angels can start to think smart themselves, sometimes they get passionate and they don't give the venture captain the support the venture captain might need to be successful. Sometimes you've got to be hard. If Craig was here right now, he'd say, he said it there. Sometimes I've got to be a tough nut. I've got to sit down and say, you know, where's your commitment and where is your... These are critical value adds coming back. You get those from angels. You won't get them from crowdfunding. So there's another reason why the angel network can sometimes be better. Strategic, we've talked about it. A lot of you are here because of that. LATAM is a strategic source. There could be grants, private sector, government grants, 
incubators, they're all in there. The ventures, <clears throat> brokers right now are having a 1% success rate in funding a company. So you have a lot of people out there saying, hey, if you pay me some money, a retain, retainer fee, I'll go find a, an investor for you. They're only succeeding in less than one in a hundred. What's happening? The brokers are quitting their jobs in droves. In the UK, almost all. Now, a number of them are smart and they've gone and formed their own crowdfunding site. That's why we've got about 1,300 of <laughs> But the world is changing and just like everything else we've seen, when disruption comes in, certain jobs are going and other jobs are coming. Some of the venture firms I'm speaking to are trying to reinvent themselves as an accredited investor cloud funding platform. I've seen that and it's pretty exciting. But again, their problem is they're trying to build the accredited investors up and how do you get them to switch or go with you as well as some other platform. So there's still a lot of tough work to be done to make your accredited investor platform Is there a feature for crowdfunding being able to take to those markets? Already. I even have big Fortune 100 companies doing crowdfunding to start a product. So yes. In fact, it'll be in their tool chest. If they can get more funding, they'll probably have a split. They'll do a little bit of crowdfunding, a lot of cloud fund funding. They'll support the angel group. Things are changing. So how can we come up with a model to make sense of all this? Because we've got more choices than we've ever had. And essentially, if you've got a system that's working a lot faster, but creating more failures, you ha you're not really ahead of the game. <laughs> so you've got to find a way. You know, it's like, hell, I, I can sell more products, and instead of uh, losing a dollar per product, I'll, I'll, I'll lose two, but I'll sell more. Does that work? No. So we've got a system that we're building over there that can get a lot more investment going. We've got to find a way to keep it good investment. So that's where this concept of a pre-flight checklist, and there's many people who have checklists or report cards. We, what we need to do is these new entrepreneurs will know an awful lot about this, but a venture to succeed is this, and we've got to let them know what they don't know. Because if they don't, oh, I didn't know I need to incorporate as a C corporation. I, I didn't know that. Oh, yes, I have this outstanding lawsuit. Well, you could have told us about it. You never asked. So right now, they're asking those questions, and they're asking it with the angel group. Some of them are, the due diligence is quite sophisticated. And some of it is, is less. And some of it is ongoing, because you start with A, and then you continue to dig. Now, what is the biggest problem I found dealing with hundreds of investors? And Mike, please tell me if I'm wrong. They go to a, a site where they have a business plan template. And they go and they fill in all the blocks. And they get charts and they get this and they get that. But they really haven't thought about their mission, their vision, their five-year goals. Because they're letting it decide on, on their goals. No, no. Well, how big do you want to be? Don't let systems drive your dreams. Start with a dream and then find out what you need to do to achieve, achieve it. So I hate these online business plan templates. Instead, I like someone sitting down and going through the strategy, and I'll talk about that later. At the end of the strategy, interesting enough, if you do it right, you'll identify your funding choice. So we went through some mini little strategy discussions, right, right guys, today, and I said, hell, if you're going to do that, do this. Oh, yeah. Wow. 
It's an aha moment, right? You kind of went, well, ooh, that hurts. <clears throat> so that's what you got to do is get your strategy. Because if you haven't got that done, you've got that poor little guy in, underneath there trying to drive his cart. Now, there are many systems, and I'm not claiming that we own or offer the best. Over 25 years, we discovered 300 areas where ventures could go wrong. And we said, wouldn't it be fun if we told them what those 300 areas are and made them look at it and say, have they thought about it and have they solved it? Just that. What we started to notice is with our ventures, our success rate started to climb and climb and climb. Like Mike, who does a similar but with a different tool, they start to get better returns more often. It's probably not a bad idea. Strat strategy is different from filling in a business plan or something like that. You really have to think about the core of your vision and mission. Mission is why you're doing it. So today, and I've asked a number of you players, I said, why are you doing, doing that? Because that's all, you know, Apple sells in the why, not, not the what. A lot of companies are marketed on the why. Get those five-year goals, three-year goals set, because having a target, it doesn't have to be a forecast. Forget about a forecast. Because if you set it, you can look at where you're weak and strong to get there and fix it with tuned strategic initiatives that will get those fixed. I found, I worked with one engineering com company. They were two million and barely break even. They did this. Three years later, they were $10 million and $4 million profitability with an offer to buy them of 20 million. So this works. Why more companies don't actually do it is because they don't understand that strategy is the key. You've got to manage strategy differently than you manage operations. Don't mix the two. Otherwise, tactically, you'll be changing your strategy every week because of the customer, because of this. You can change the strategy, but once a month or once a quarter, stay on strategy. Don't jerk about. Kills more companies than you would imagine. So the winners and losers, as I wrap up this presentation, and are we all set, guys? The winners and losers here, unfortunately, the venture players and a lot of the banks, you've already seen the banks, running into serious problems. The winners, Mike, stand up. You're, 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 you're one of the win winners here. I am? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Stand up. Mike is, yes. Give it to him. You're too kind. But... The real winner in this democratization that can happen today for you, don't feel odd, just it's you. It's you. So I'm going to say a couple of words to you all, okay? Because we want to end this on, on, on a note. And I'm going to give you some motivation. And I'm going to say, I want you to repeat after me. Get up, startups. Get up for your rights. Get up, startups. Don't give up the fight. Stand, stand up. Let's do it. It's boogie. Okay, are you ready? Get up, startups. Get. Come on. Depends if you want to ask them. Because right now everyone's thinking Saturday, almost quarter to seven. I'm out, out of here. Bye bye, all. Thanks, John. That was great. Thanks, John.